We are now looking at the platform control box on this scissor lift. What you'll notice here are a few different buttons and an e-stop switch. In order to operate this machine, you need to first pull out the e-stop switch. Once you do that, the scissor lift will load up and be ready to go. On this, you have two, four switches total. The first one right here is the horn. Simply a safety alarm for you. You have your turtle button, which just allows you to go at a slower speed for your travel. You have your raise and lower button here, and you have your drive here. When you're using this joystick, this will control you going up and down and your drive, which is why they have different buttons here for you to select while operating the machine. The next part we're gonna show you is gonna be from the basket and how to operate the machine. All right, we're inside the platform of the scissor lift. Some common things to check before operating it. Make sure that your handrails don't have any kind of creases or bends as if they're structurally compromised. On this one, I don't see any. It looks to be structurally safe and ready to use. If your job site requires it, there are tie down spots for your harness, such as here and on the front right and left of the machine on either side. While you're in the machine, if you need more of a working area or if you have an area that you need to reach out to a little bit further away, you can note this foot pedal right here. You press down on it and push the whole platform out to the designated area that you need to work. Note the safety stickers right here, letting you know that you should not be operating on any kind of incline. It will send off an audible alarm if you do. Other than that, we're gonna go into the controls and how they operate. We're gonna be starting by looking at this. You pull your e-stop out. Once you pull your e-stop out, we're gonna start off by going in the air. All right, now that we're in the air to show everybody, we're completely extended out and up. From this point, you can drive the scissor lift. It'll be at a turtle pace. You just press the drive button. Once you do that, you would simply just squeeze the trigger and push it forward to go forward and backward to go backward. It will go slow. This is a tip over safety piece to make sure that you do not have a rollover incident. Don't worry, even though the machine is a little wobbly, you aren't going anywhere. On scissor lifts, there's a ton of different ones. They range anywhere from 19 feet all the way up to 50 feet. They range from indoor lifts to outdoor lifts as far as with rough terrain tires. The big difference between electrical lifts that have non-marking tires such as this one and outdoor lifts that have rough terrain tires are their practicalities of uses. When you're looking at a four wheel drive scissor lift, you only have to go straight up and down for the area you're working in outside. It's the same thing for inside use, except with non-marking tires. They make electric rough terrain scissor lifts, as well as dual fuel and diesel powered scissor lifts as well. On this one, this is an electric scissor lift that is only run by battery and has non-marking tires strictly to be used on concrete, asphalt, or another firm surface inside area. A great application that these are used for is changing out lighting, overhead plumbing, and HVAC work that may be overhead on a concrete surface. When you're using these, they range from sizes. They range from a 19 foot all the way up to 50 foot. And some of them have downriggers for added rollover protection. On those, it typically comes around a 32 foot narrow. This is when the platform width is narrower than the height that it needs to go up, which makes it a smaller footprint while still giving you that added stability in case you are in an area that you could potentially roll over. In closing today, we've been able to show you how to operate a scissor lift and some of the practicalities that it may be used for. I hope this has been able to help you with any kind of work you may be doing in the future and any help you may need coming up, call the Dozer team and we'll be able to help you.